November the 15th, 2011. I'm talking with Laura. Lauren. Lauren. Uh huh. Matheny. Matheny. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Nice. Okay, so I'm pre speaking with Lauren Matheny, who um, had a, she's an acting major mm -hmm. at OCU and sophomore, freshman? I'm a freshman. Freshman. And she had an experience that she's going to inform us about. <laughs> So, um, what exactly happened? Like, where were you? When was it? Sure. Um, I was on the fourth floor, um, and it was for a musical theater summer camp, and I was rooming in the two-person side with a friend, and um, we were really close with our suite mates who were across the bathroom. And this was in July-ish of 2009, I guess. Um, and do you want to just hear what happened? Yeah. Okay, well, it all started out, first off, I don't really know if I believe in anything paranormal, um, but this kind of made me a believer. <laughs> um, the girls across the hall about a week into camp um, came running into our room one night and said, well, across the bathroom, our suite mates came running into our room and said that there was a ghost in their room and they were really freaked out, but they were really dramatic. So me and my roommate were like, okay, whatever, there's a ghost in your room, just go to sleep. So they did. The next night they said the same thing. And so we decided to go sit with them on their bed. And um, we're sitting in the room closest to the bathroom, the little cubicle, I guess, close to the bathroom. And we locked the door and turned off the light. And <laughs> this sound, um, like when people crinkle ch paper chip bags um, started around the ceiling of the room which I was like it's just pipes or something but we turned the light on and we were all sitting on the bed holding hands and the door was unlocked um, which really freaked me out and then um, we all continued getting more scared we kept getting text messages from no sender especially two of the girls got them a lot and our phone calls were really disruptive. And so I called my dad and asked him what we should do. And he said we should tell the ghost to go away. Nicely ask it. And we were like, okay. So we all did. And um, my last friend didn't want to. She was crying, she was really upset. And we told her, you just need to do it and it'll stop. So she said, um, I, we need you to go away. We don't want you here. And as soon as she said it, there was this big sound like somebody dropped something big on the bathroom floor in the bathroom next to us, which is horrible. And um, that night we kind of just, we went back to our room because it wasn't in our room, but we were, we were still pretty creeped out and stuff continued to happen. So the next week, my friend Danielle came in to sleep in my bed with me because she was so scared of her room. And that night when we turned the lights out, the crinkly noises started in our room um, which scared me and we had noticed in their room there was knocking from inside the cubicle walls and that happened in my room too um, and the first night she stayed there she was on the floor but she came to sleep in my bed because she said she felt something like touch her arm <laughs> and I was really creeped out at this point point. Um, and that first night we had been in bed for probably 45 minutes couldn't sleep and then from inside my closet which is it's hollow, there's a space inside where all my clothes were. Um, something knocked on the outer door, um, I think like three times, and that was horrible. Um, and we cried, but we just said, let's ignore it and go to sleep. So the next night was the last night we lived in that dorm room. Um, and we were in bed, we turned the lights out, the crinkly noise started right away, there was weird skittering noises around the floor and stuff, and then, um, it sounded honestly like somebody body slammed my closet door. The door shook and it woke my sweet mates and the girls across the hall up. It was so loud. Um, and at that point, we called our counselor and told him we had to move out. <laughs> I went too. <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> um, had you had any previous knowledge that Walker may be haunted? I had never heard anything about it. Actually, we didn't know until um, we went to the counselor's table of uh, the second week of camp after all this stuff had started and said, we think our room is, something's in our room, it's haunted and we're really scared. And one of the 
camp counselors said, well, haven't you heard of the girl who jumped out the window? Don't you know why all the rooms are, why you can't open the windows in any of the rooms? And of course we were like, oh my God, like, no. We had never heard of that. And the counselors kind of laughed it off, but they knew about it, I guess. And yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel um, when I tell you that so far we have had no, like we haven't found anything proving somebody jumped from the window, just that there was a failed attempt. Mm -hmm. You know, I honestly, when people were talking about the girl jumping out the window, it didn't really have an effect on me. And I, like I said, I don't know if I believe in ghosts or not. I just know that that was, it was terrifying to be in there. And I don't really need, I don't really need like a factual basis for it just because Whatever it was, I don't want, really want to know what it was that I experienced, but I, it was not good. It was not a good place to be. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I mean, um, I was actually slated to live in Banning this year, and they asked me if I wanted to live in Walker or Centennial, and I told them, I had called earlier and said, I don't want to live in Walker. I had a bad experience, and it's just not okay. <laughs> um. Well, do you remember which room it was on the fourth floor? Because I was told it was the seventh floor. Yeah, this is a weird thing I've noticed. Um, we were in the fourth floor B hallway. Um, I forget. We, mm, I don't remember what room exactly we were in. And so I always said it was the fourth floor that was haunted, and some other people here agreed with me. But then other girls said it was the seventh, and other girls said it was the third. And it seems kind of like all of these people have felt the same kind of thing that we had in our room. So somebody said it moves around or something. I don't know. That freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> have you uh, talked to other people who may have had uh, experiences? I have talked to a lot, actually. I mean, not a lot, a lot, but probably there have been 10 girls or so who I've talked to um, who felt stuff. And most of it's been the same weird noises and stuff dropping, which originally I thought it was pipes, you know, until stuff started in between the cubicles and in the closet. Ugh, yeah. I don't even want to, that's creepy to say. But yeah, one girl, um, the weirdest story I heard was she was studying in her room and she had lived there for a semester and all the weird skittering noises and stuff had been happening and it was really late at night and she felt like somebody was pressing on her shoulder and so she, kind of, she knew nobody was there, so it freaked her out, but it just kept happening over and over, and she thought her shoulder was cramping or something. It was just weird, but she woke up the next morning and she had a bruise on her shoulder. Yeah. And this isn't a girl who would really, I mean, I don't think she would make stuff up. I guess you never know, but she didn't strike me as a person to make up stories like that, so. I've heard it from a lot of people. One of my friends who lived there, um, she's a junior, and she moved out because she couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that I have, I've been temporarily living in seventh floor. I, I think the closest thing I thought was a ghost was I heard noises, but then my room started shaking and I realized it was just it was the earthquake. I was like, mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> but, um, just, uh, we're not trying to prove or disprove, we're more trying to qualify. And so I really appreciate your time. And yeah. um, your story is very interesting. So. And creepy, right? Oh. <laughs> so go the lights on. But um. Yeah, I know. I feel really, I try not to tell people who live in Walker mm -hmm. this stuff just because, I mean, I wouldn't want to live there. Like, I would not live there now knowing what happened to me. And I don't want to freak people out unduly, you know, because it could have, I guess, it could have been something else, maybe, but. <laughs> have you been back in Walker since this has happened? I have. I have a lot of people who live there. I have to admit, I don't like being in there very much. Um, it, yeah, some of my, actually my sorority twin um, lives across the hall from the room I was in, oh, wow. and when I went to where her room was, I was like, and I haven't told her oh. all of it because I know she'd flip. And so, I don't know. It's just not my favorite. <laughs> well, that's, 
all I can think of. And I really appreciate this. And yeah. just thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. All right. <laughs> um,